Hello. In this video, I'll introduce the concept of nodes. Being able to implement and analyze circuits depends very heavily on identifying circuit nodes. A circuit node is just a point where two or more circuit components are connected. This definition is pretty straightforward and would make one think that the idea of a node is about as easy as it gets in engineering. There are, however, a couple of subtleties associated with identifying nodes. To understand nodes, we must first understand what is called the lumped parameters approach towards representing circuits. The concept of lumped parameter systems is a fundamental assumption used to analyze and understand circuits. Our lump parameter representation of a circuit essentially assumes that the circuit is made up of components which are located at discrete points in the circuit. These components can be resistors, diodes, capacitors, and so on. The effects of these components on the circuit's voltage and current are assumed to be lumped at these locations, hence the term lump parameter circuit. Also, the components are assumed to be connected with perfect conductors. These have no effect whatsoever on the circuit's voltages and currents. Here's a generic example of what we're talking about. These gray boxes represent our circuit components. These components affect the voltages and currents in the circuit. The components are connected by perfect conductors, represented by these lines. The conductors have no effect on voltage and current. The voltage at one end of a conductor is always exactly the same as the voltage at the other end of the conductor. Now, we will nearly always assume that our circuit can be represented by a lump parameters model, but that assumption is not necessarily always true. For a lump parameters model to be appropriate, what we're really assuming is that information transmits instantly throughout the circuit. That is, the speed of information transmission is infinite. So if I change a voltage or a current somewhere in the circuit, the effect is seen everywhere instantly. Now, as far as we know at the moment, the theory of relativity limits the speed of information transmission to less than the speed of light. So this assumption is not exactly true. However, if we change our voltages and currents slowly relative to the time taken for the information to get to other parts of the circuit, then the assumption is acceptable and becomes very useful. In cases where this assumption is not true, we have to use what's called a distributed parameters model of the circuit. A distributed parameters model will always be more accurate than a lump parameters model, but the mathematics we have to deal with is a lot more complicated. Quite often, the improvement in accuracy is so minute that it isn't worth the extra mathematical complexity. So, what does a distributed parameter system look like? Here's my example of a distributed parameter system, a slinky. The rate at which information is transmitted through a slinky is really quite low. Information transmits through waves which propagate it through the system. If I shake one end of the slinky very quickly, the other end doesn't know I've done this until the wave gets down to that end. This can cause some behavior that can appear strange at first glance. For example, let's look at what happens when I drop the slinky. The bottom of the slinky doesn't start to move immediately. Since the bottom doesn't even know I've let go until the information has had time to propagate from the top to the bottom. Changes to the system are happening fast relative to the information transmission rate through the system. We call this a distributed parameter system. Let's get back to our lump parameter circuit. In a lump parameter circuit, we get to define nodes. A circuit node is a point at which two or more circuit components are connected. However, since perfect conductors don't really count as circuit components, you can spread out a node with perfect conductors. So in this context, the term point doesn't mean a point in space. It's a point in electrical terms, which means that it's the entire area which has a single voltage. Since there's no voltage difference across a perfect conductor, we can have perfect conductors inside a node. Let's look at what this means in terms of our previous example. Recall that the circuit components in this circuit are represented by the gray boxes and that the lines are perfect conductors. We want to identify nodes on this circuit. It's tempting to identify this point and this point as being separate nodes. However, there's only a perfect conductor between these two, so the voltages here and here are always the same. So these two points are actually both in the same node. Likewise, these perfect conductors cause these two points to be within the same node. These points also constitute nodes. 
So this circuit has four nodes altogether. Now you know how to identify nodes in a lump parameter circuit.